reading passage, reading comprehension, as we know that it involves four steps. Reading the passage, reading the questions, reading the options, and choosing the right options. We have already dealt with all these four steps. Now we have to come up to solving the passages. Fine? Okay. For solving the passages, what all things we have to bear in mind? You get the passage? First thing what you do is you read the passage and while reading the passage your main objective should be developing the content pattern. Developing the content pattern. If you develop the content pattern, that means it will definitely, this content pattern will definitely aid you un in understanding the passage. So it's better that you develop the content pattern. Then second step is to identify how to develop the content pattern actually. You have to first identify, identify whether the passage is built on problem solution content pattern or the passage is built on, um, you know, controversy content pattern or the passage is built on um, this positive description or negative description. So you identify the content pattern. There are four content pattern. Okay? Then, third, always remember while building up the content pattern, you should identify the topic at the end. Though author starts with the topic, usually it happens, 90% cases is that author starts with the topic, but sometimes author doesn't start with the topic. So uh, the best thing, uh, the best way to identify the topic is to see the high count word, the word that is being repeated many times. It will only be possible if you go through the passage completely. So topic should be identified at the end of the passage. Sorry, identify after reading the passage. After reading the passage. And always remember, uh, when the content pattern is built on problem solution, the topic could be problem, the topic could be solution. Okay? Now, fourth, author's perspective is Author's perspective you will usually find at the end of the passage. Fine? Fifth, crux. We know that crux is hidden. It's implicit in the passage. So, how to identify the crux? It is topic plus author's perspective. Or it could be topic plus solution. It could be topic plus solution. Or topic plus effect. Or topic plus advantage. This is how you can find out the crux of the passage. The weightage should be given to topic plus author's perspective. Then if author's perspective is not mentioned, then topic plus solution. If it is also not mentioned, then effect. And in uh, descriptive section, in, sorry, in descriptive uh, content part, the crux could, uh, should be topic plus advantage. And in that also, if author's perspective is given, then the preference should be given to author's perspective. So the first preference should be given to author's perspective. Okay? Fine. Then we come to questions. After reading the passage, you will read the question, isn't it? You will read the questions. Just do not read. Notice. Notice the expressions that are used in the questions. 
we have already dealt with it expressions that are used in the passage uh, sorry in questions um according to the passage in the context of the passage with reference to the passage the first expression the second expression is not third expression is high intensity expression that is most key main best nearest closest okay so uh, quoted lines fine so understand the expression then understand the question that what you are required to do whether the question is asked on cause whether the question is asked on effect fine so you have to understand the question well otherwise you won't be able to answer accurately fine so these are the six uh, six steps you have to follow uh, if you want you can take it down okay now seventh step seventh step is option okay okay while you read the option there could be three possibility the first possibility is you are very confident that you know the answer you are confident of knowing the answer okay the second possibility would be that you get stuck you get confused between the two options and the third possibility could be you do not know the right option the right choice okay the accurate choice only these three possibilities could be there while you try to choose the right option okay you are confident okay you know the answer you are confused you get stuck between the two options which one is correct one or you do not know the right choice at all fine these three possibilities could be there now in all these three possibilities it's an earnest request that you should apply a row technique okay even if you are confident that you know the answer and there is no doubt about it you are 100 200% sure that i know the answer that you know the answer but still verify your correct answer by applying row technique by deleting the option okay fine so even in this case you should verify verify okay verifying is very important now in this case you are confused between the two options you might feel that uh, both the options are responding to the question both the options are seemingly similar options then the best basic thing what you have to do see the difference between them see the similarity between them weigh the option against each other match the with the passage what are the difference you match the, those difference with the passage definitely you will get to the right choice okay the third possibility you do not know the right choice you get you read the question you understand the question but you are not able to know the right choice then also please on the basis of your understanding of the passage apply row technique eliminate the options rule out the options and i am definitely sure that you will arrive at the right choice okay but remember one thing that the passage the answer should be strictly based on the passage not on your own opinion okay fine and the last thing is that answer quickly 
but not impulsively. What does it mean? The last but not the least. Answer quickly but not impulsively. Don't answer in haste. Even if you know the answer, don't answer in, the ha in haste. Apply road technique, verify your passage. If you get uh, stuck at the two options, just blindly, uh, you know, strike off the wrong, uh, just blindly select the right choice. It's not, you should not do this, okay? If you do not know the right choice, if you do not understand the question, do not understand the option and you impulsively leave the question, don't do that also, okay? If you have, if you have got the time, you can do this, uh, you can solve the question by applying row technique and if you are not able to get to the right choice, leave the question then and there, come back to that question later if you have got the time. But do not waste your time. Don't take more than 30 or 45 seconds in, on one question. Okay, fine. So let's start with the passage. First we will start with the small passages. Then, after solving the small passages, we will uh, solve the passages of CSAT 2011. We will solve the passages of 2011, 2012, and 2013. Okay, fine?